The countdown's begun. We're less than two months away from the end of support for Server 2012 and 2012 R2. And if your domain controllers blow up, your entire company could go down with them. But don't worry, I've got your back. And in this video, I'll guide you through my foolproof five-step plan to upgrade all of your domains seamlessly. Now, the first thing you should do is make sure that all of your domain replication is working correctly and have a good backup of Active Directory, just in case. Now, I've got two DCs today, but this plan will work no matter how many DCs you have. Then over in AD Sites and Services, I've got two different subnets and two different sites, one DC per site. Now, the sites tell the AD clients which DC is closest to them so that client can authenticate, get GP updates as fast as possible. And if that DC goes down, what DC is the next closest one? Here in the Azure portal, I'm creating a new VM resource. And under server here, you wanna click the create button, then pick your subscription and resource group as always, then give your new servers a name. Then select your region and availability options. Then you wanna scroll down to the image section and click that drop down and select the OS that you want and I'm gonna use the latest Server 2022. Then select a VM size that fits your needs and enter your local admin credentials. Scroll down and in the inbound ports section, set those to none. No domain controller should ever have a public IP address attached to it or be directly exposed to the internet. Now, if you think for some reason you need inbound traffic from the internet to your DCs, then your DCs should be behind a firewall that receives those inbound connections first. Now at the bottom, check the box here if you qualify for the Azure Hybrid Use Benefit, which will really help to lower your VM costs. Then click Next. Here on the Disk tab, you've got Premium SSDs selected, and that is recommended for any production VMs. But if this is for your lab, you can select a standard SSD to help keep your costs down. Then click Next. Here you'll want to select the same virtual network and subnet where your current DCs are located. And remember, no public IP addresses or inbound ports should ever be allowed. As for the network security groups, I like to attach an NSG to my subnet and not to my VMs. That way I can secure the entire subnet with one NSG. Or I could just use a central firewall. And you can go into a lot more detail about the builds as you need to in your environment, but when you're ready, click Create. And then just repeat that process for all of the other VMs that you need to build. Then you can remote into your new servers. But if you're building them in the cloud and you don't have a public IP address on them, how can you remote in? Well, you could do it over your internal VPNs or you could go to your virtual network. And on the left, go to Bastion. Then just click the Deploy button. Now the Bastion service turns the Azure portal into a jump host so that you can remote into the VMs on this network through the portal without exposing anything to the internet. After you sign in, the server manager should open automatically and then go to local servers on the left, click the name of your server right there, and then click the change button and join the server to your domain. Then go ahead and reboot. Now the second step in the plan is to promote your new servers to be domain controllers. Sign back in and go to the server manager, and then you wanna click up there on manage, then add a new role. Check the box for Active Directory Domain Services, and then click next through the wizard. Once complete, you'll see this pop up and you can click right over there and then promote this server to be a domain controller. Choose to add this DC to an existing domain. Then if you need to, drop in your domain admin credentials. Then you need to have a domain recovery password in case things go wrong and you also should select here the AD site that this DC should belong to. Then click next through the rest of the wizard, but this like everything else in this process can be scripted for full automation. And you can click right over there to take a look at that script. And you can add this script to your VMs when they're building as a custom script extension. So all of this is done for you. Once you're done, you can go over to Active Directory users and computers and in the domain controllers container, you should see all of your new DCs. Now, before you do anything else, you wanna make sure you get at least one replication cycle and that all the DCs can communicate with each other and everything's working properly. Then don't forget to go back to your virtual network to the DNS servers. Then you wanna add all the IP addresses for your new DCs 
so that everybody knows where they are. Then we can move on to the next step in the plan, migrating the five flexible single master operation or FISMO roles. That would be the PDC emulator, the RID master, and the infrastructure master, which reside at the domain level, while the domain naming master and the schema master are at the forest level. And you can actually check all of these out in your AD tools, but there's a little thing about the schema master. The schema snap-in is actually not registered in Windows by default. For that one, you need to click on start and go to run, and then type regserve32 space schmmgmt.dll. And that'll register the schema snap-in so that you can open it up. Then you want to go back to run and open MMC, and then go to file and add a snap-in, then select your schema snap-in, and while you're at it, you should probably select all the other AD tools as well. Then you can do everything in one place. Now in the users and computers section, right click on your domain and go to the operations master. Here are those three domain level roles. And do the same thing over on domains and trusts to see the domain naming master and right click on the schema to see the schema master role. Now moving these roles is as simple as right click and change the DC to the one that you want to take over the role, then right click again and go to the operations master and you see which target is your new server, click the change button and you are done. And like everything else, this can be automated in PowerShell. So you wanna run these two commands at the top and that'll tell you who owns all the roles right now. And you see our schema master here is already owned by one of our 2022 DCs that we just transferred it to. Then you want to replace these variables right over here with your new target DC names. And of course, you can get more elaborate with this if you have more than two domain controllers. Then run this bottom section of the code and just move all of your roles at once. Just click yes or yes to all. And once you're done with that, run the first two lines again and verify all of your new owners. Then wait for a whole nother replication cycle to be sure everything's working properly. Now the fourth step in the process is to clean up by removing your old DCs. But these are domain controllers. You can't just delete them. And even if you go to server manager and go to remove and try to remove the ADDS role, you'll see you can't do that either. You need to first click over here and demote the DC back into a regular server first. Now, because everything should be working properly across all of your DCs, there's no need to force it here, so just click Next. And this is gonna remove that DNS and global catalog role from our servers, so check the box to proceed and click Next. Now provide a new local admin password for your servers, click Next, and review everything carefully. And you can also click the button here for the script to do this automated across all your systems if you like. Then click Next. The server will reboot and once another round of replication is done and all your DCs are cleaned up, don't forget, go to your virtual network to the DNS servers and remove all of those 2012 DCs from your list and click save. Now the fifth and final step of this easy to follow plan is to upgrade the forest and domain function levels. These determine all the features and capabilities in your environment. Then go to AD domains and trusts right click on the domain name and then raise the domain function level. And depending on your version of server, there may be multiple options here in the dropdown. I suggest using the highest one possible. Then click OK. Read through the messages here so you know what's going on and just click OK to complete the process. Then once all of the domains in your forest have been raised, you can right click on the top level of domains and trusts, raise the forest function level, and again, select the highest level possible, and then click OK. But there's actually an even simpler way to upgrade those 2012 servers, and you can check that out right over here. Happy learning.